change. The tank trap is now being farmed, and as near as I could tell, this was in about within 100 yards of where I had my closest call. I had many close calls, but this one was very close. And I um, says, I'll see what I can do. So uh, in a day or two, uh, uh, infantryman is battle-wise. I mean, you can tell whether that shell is going to be close or 100 yards away. And I knew this one was going to be close, so I prayed. And it got closer, and I prayed again. And uh, I said, wow, this could have my name on it. And it kept coming for what seemed like forever, and kaboom, and it exploded right behind me. I could reach the edge of the crater, which was about six feet across, without even moving. That's how close I came to being killed. And uh, uh, I was very fortunate there, too. If the, uh, if the ground had been frozen, which it had been, why, the, the blast would have come like that, and they wouldn't have even found my dog tags or boots even. Mm -hmm. But fortunately, the shell went down in, and the explosive power went up. So I, I owe a little bit of luck, quite a little bit of luck, to be talking to you all today. So that was as near as I could figure out. And that's, that's, the, uh, that's the armament I had, 81 millimeter mortars. I was... Um, I was, uh, have you waved five minutes? Where is that gal? I got five left. I think we're going to make it. Okay. Uh, I had six of these mortars, and uh, I was the organic ar artillery, you might say, for the battalion commander. My job was to be right at his elbow, and uh, because he might not be able to get uh, cannon company or division artillery, and but I'm his organic artillery. I'm right with him. And so that was my job. I had four battalion commanders and one of them, I saw him relieved. He was a Silas Jose, a West Pointer, and I saw him relieved. I don't have time to really go into details, but anyway, um, that's that was what I had. Now, I told you about Sergeant Watkins. He's the guy I heard crying for his mother, and I'm sure that he was dying at the time. He was probably 50 yards away from me, and I couldn't see him. There was smoke and, and uh, trees and so forth. And uh, so here's my, my good buddy, Harry Helms. He's the secretary of uh, the 94th Division Association, and we roomed together, and we are there saluting the cross of Sergeant Watkins. And here we are again. At, that is General Patton's grave, right there. I, it's my second visit to the grave of, of the great one. There are about 5,000 Americans buried in, uh, in the Luxembourg, American Military Cemetery at Luxembourg. And here we are. This is the only American memorial on German soil, and it features the fight in 94th Division. And here we are. The five of us on the left were the warriors. The fellow on the right was the president of the GI Friends of Luxembourg, and he presented us each with a medal of honor. There it is. It's not quite uh, as, as, uh, as great as the Congressional Medal of Honor, but it is a medal of honor, and it's a pretty thing. Okay. Now here, here is uh, Daughter Marilee again, and this is this is a castle of, of the German. We got the things out of order, but this is the castle of that German, the guy who's in the German army. And uh, I arranged for this pretty girl, you see, uh, about like Jennifer, and uh, she's from uh, she's in real estate down in California, and. Uh, she, uh, I arranged for her to sit next to the, to the German soldier and put a little smile on his face, not too big, not, a, not as big as mine, but uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> and as we crossed the Saar River, uh, this was Serig, where I liberated a German uh, 9mm uh, rifle, and, uh, and from there we went up to Lampaden Ridge. And uh, 
I had not been to Lampaden Ridge. That was some of the last bitter fighting before we broke through and went to the Rhine. And I hadn't been there because our battalion was in reserve, uh, division reserve. But um, we did see Lampaden Ridge, a beautiful country it is now, but it's quite a deal. And uh, this is my good friend, uh, Bill Foley, who is, he's a world-class author. He's written a book, Visions from a Foxhole. It's a tremendous read. And he's a great uh, cartoonist and muralist. He painted the mural of the 94th, <coughs> General Patton giving a silver star to a 94th Division Lieutenant. And that mural hangs in the Capitol at Boston, Massachusetts. And uh, now, interesting story. Now, uh, on Lion Payton Ridge, there's a little, a little village called Shonareth. And his company was very badly depleted. Rifle company would have about 180 men. And they were down to about 40. And they were surrounded by the 6th SS Mom Division. The SS were the hated, rotten, sadistic, they, did, they were terrible guys. They ran the death camps. <laughs> and they were surrounded by them, but they'd taken a couple prisoners. And uh, they, uh, they had needed all four bodies to shoot or throw grenades or whatever to stay alive. And so his first sergeant told him to take those two prisoners out behind the church and shoot them. And that's what he did. He, he got them up off their knees marched in single file around behind the church he and he shot the one in, closest to him both of them dropped the bullet went right through both of them and then he shot him in the head that's pretty grim stuff pretty grim stuff and then as was mentioned being the senior member of the five i appointed myself as the goodwill ambassador and uh, so this is in that little village right where the church was. And uh, I saw this lady there and somebody had taken a picture or something and she seemed a little concerned. So the Goodwill Ambassador went over and assured her that we were friends and everything was okay. And somebody even got a picture of me kissing her on the cheek through her shawl. But uh, <laughs> she's not one of my favorite blonde girls. But, uh, she <laughs> But anyway, that was nice. All right, now, ah, now, I, I told you about uh, our, we flew into Paris and we left from Brussels. And now Brussels is a big city. I don't know, three million or so. And uh, it's the capital of the uh, European Union. And so it's big. And the, naturally the airport is big. I don't know, it just goes over acres and acres and acres. J just the terminal, uh, not a, let alone the runways and so forth, but it's big, probably 10,000 people in there. And would you know, I, I lucked out, uh, 10,000 people, and uh, I was in a, a Starbucks coffee place, I think maybe 80 or 90 people in there. And I just happened to sit down next to this girl, and now believe it or not, I, uh, I only visited with her about five, not over 10 minutes. And all I learned then or now is that her name was Natalie, very pretty Natalie, age 26, and came from Kiev, Ukraine, a former province of, of Russia. And, and that was Natalie, and I, I guess she was kind of a ham or something, because she, uh, she got right with the program. And now the last picture... <laughs> now... Uh, Oh, is that five minutes? Oh, well, I'll run out long for them. I, this is the last picture. This is the last one. I'm, I'm about done. I, I think you've been very good on the on the. You're a good timekeeper. I like you. But anyway, um, um, let's face it. Uh, and that, that's pretty nice, huh? And uh, let, let's face it. Some have got it, and some haven't. <laughs> Seeing Roger surrounded by all these young women reminds me of uh, Hugh Hefner. He was recently warned about the consequences, the mortal consequences, 
of uh, an 84-year-old marrying a 24-year-old. And he said, if she dies, she dies. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Well, I didn't get a kiss. I'm not young enough, I guess. Oh.